get calm meow aka the christian cat and i try to look a little deeper into god's word every day so i finished learning i finished studying study 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 wow <laughs> i finished studying this is what happens when you talk too much talk too fast i finished studying the book of james a while ago in my quiet time I don't know why I did it. <laughs> this is one of the things that I learned from this book. I learned a lot from this book. By the way, I could tell you so much of what I learned. But this is just one of the things that I learned and I want to share with you today because it was like poom. Everything from the Bible strikes me like poom. Yeah. So anyway, not to waste your time, let's go. What did the book of James teach me? So this is from James chapter 1. It's from verse 22. James chapter 1. Anything now? <laughs> James, over here. James chapter 1, verse 22. To James chapter 1 verse 22 to 24 Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves Do what it says Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says Is like a man who looks at his face in the mirror And after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets who he looks like We're gonna continue from that But that that struck me so much when I read it You know sometimes when the verse When you read the bible and the verse is like Poof, I'm here you know, like the verse just jumps out at you. That verse actually like really jumped out at me from verse 22 to 24. And like the fact that, look at this, from the verse 23 and 24, like anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says, like a man who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forget what he looks like. The thing is, when do you ever look at the mirror and then you go away and you forget what you look like? You know, you just don't. It's like if you look at the, yourself in the mirror and then you forget what you look like, it's like you forget your identity and you forget who you are and you forget your name. <laughs> I guess because if you forget what you look like, you probably forget everything about yourself because what you look like is most of your identity, right? The way I interpret this when I read it, it was like, you know, disobeying the word of God is like forgetting your identity in Christ because when we are a Christian and we are born again, we actually have a new identity. We don't belong to ourselves we belong to God and we have this new identity that he gave us and that's why we have this name Christian because if you have you, you know if you don't have if you don't have a new identity why would you call yourself something new you know you might as well just just stick with not being a Christian you don't need the name Christian if you don't have a new identity right so like when you when you read the word of God and then you don't follow it it's like forgetting your identity and it's like forgetting who you are in God's eyes and you reject the new life that he wants to give you so basically what I get from this is I know it's so basic <laughs> but it's just it's just nice to be reminded of it you know so like basically if you want to be true followers of Christ we must be made new okay we, we can't just we can't just listen to the word or read the Bible and like not do what it says because the thing is we are supposed to be Christ representative on earth which we must show Christ in us and what is what is a better way to show Christ in us yes read the Bible and do what it says you can't just it's good you it's good to you read the Bible yes it's good read the Bible very very good but what's the point if you read it and no one can see Christ in you like the point of this is to read what we're supposed to do and how Jesus lives and how we are supposed to live like Jesus and actually do that in our life not just read and just read it's like in school like you study not just for the sake of studying right? you study to put all of what you studied in the exam paper you want to answer the exam paper with what you memorize and everything that you read and everything that you study is the same thing you want to read the Bible and apply it in your life so we basically we must be an example of Christ and if we read this perfect law, this perfect, we will get to the perfect law of this. But if we read this amazing book, this book of the, the manual of life, I call this a manual of life because this is literally what it is. This is the only book in the world that you can rely on to tell you on how to live your life, you know. I mean, there are many other books in the world, I guess, about how to live your life. But this is the only one that you can actually rely on because all those other books are not the complete manual. So basically, it's like when you buy a new car, and you read the manual, I actually don't know if your car comes with the manual. But, <laughs> I guess it comes with the manual. You read the manual and you don't just read it, right? You read it and then you do what it says, you know, how to change the tire, how to do this, how to do that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have a car. You read the manual to know how to use the thing, right? If you buy a new phone 
let's admit it, no one actually reads the manual, but you're supposed to read the manual when you buy a new phone, right? So that you know, like, what to do, like, how to charge, and all of these things, right? So it's the same thing, you read the Bible, and then you don't apply it to your life, it's like, might as well not have the Bible! Might as well not read it at all! Why not just not have the Bible? Why not just not be a Christian if you don't want to live like Jesus, you know? So, basically, when we are Christian and we are born again and we accept this new identity, we should live according to the identity. We should live like Jesus because He gave this new life to us. What's the point of the old life anymore? If you still want to live like the old life, don't be a Christian. Now let's continue to verse 25. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. So the part that struck me about this verse is the part that is the perfect law that gives freedom. Now the thing is, I don't think we usually think of freedom when we think about God's law. Like we think about God's law and the Bible and all that like oh I have to live my life like this I can't do this I can't do that I must do this I must do that like I feel like most of us not even just non-Christians like there are a lot of non-Christians like a lot of non-religious people out there who look at the Bible and be like ugh just a book of rules I I don't want to be a Christian I want to live my life and even there are a lot of us Christians I know sometimes we I feel like there's so many things that (laughs) The Bible has so many rules and so many standards for Christians, right? So we feel like we are so like, like we can't be free. But the thing is, right here it says the perfect law that gives freedom. This is the most perfect law in the world. There's so many laws in the world, but this is the most perfect one. And it gives freedom. Usually when we think about the law, well, it, it's, it feels like it's keeping us in a cage. There are so many rules. But the thing is, the law is good. The law pretends... The law prevents bad things from happening. That's why it's the law, right? And it's the same thing. The Bible has so many rules for us to follow. And so many things that we can do, cannot do, should do, shouldn't do, you know? And that is good. That is that is good. Even though we don't feel like it's good. But it's the most perfect law that gives freedom. Because the thing is, God's freedom is the only true freedom in the world. The, the world will promise us freedom. The world, the world will say that this is bondage. The world will say that the Bible and uh, Jesus and Christianity, all that, it's just it's bondage. It's useless. It keeps you in a cage. It keeps you in chains. Might as well be free with us, you know? Might as well have sex before marriage. That is freedom. And all of these things, like, the world will promise us freedom, but that is just bondage to sin. Because the thing is, sin is addictive, and once you're there, and you can just get sucked into it, you know, because sin is addictive. We as humans, we have the sinful heart. Once we start, we don't stop sinning, okay? So that's why you tell one lie. <laughs> I have a story about this. I can tell in a different video about telling one lie and then it becomes many lies. I should tell that story in the next video. But <laughs> like, it's true. You do one sin and you think it's just one sin, but it will become many, many, many other sin, you know? This sin is addictive. Sin, it spreads like wildfire. And it's so much easier to sin than to follow the word of God. So we tend to take sin as freedom because it's so much easier to follow. But sin is actually... Trust me when I say... I used to think the same thing. Like, I used to think that the Bible is just a bunch of stupid rules. And (laughs) I'd rather be free. But the thing is, once you actually realize that this this is freedom. This is freedom from sin. And this is what someone told me last time. The world will promise you freedom. But the Bible promises a different kind of freedom. It's a freedom from sin. Because let me tell you, ever since I stopped being a lukewarm Christian, and ever since I started becoming a real Christian this year, and actually doing my quiet time, reading the Bible, and talking to God, and praying so much more. Not like I didn't pray before, but now like I actually get closer to God, and I start, start this channel, and stuff like that. Like I've been feeling so free, much more free than, much, much more free than back when I was cursing, when I was glorifying my favorite bands now I don't even look up to celebrities and and all of those things and I feel so much more free it's hard to believe but last time I used to think that following the Bible is not freedom you know but it's true the Bible is freedom it's truth the world will promise you freedom and that freedom will feel so good for a short time but then you can't just you can't get enough of it you'll never be satisfied and it feel you feel good you're satisfied for a while but you just keep on you keep on feeling hungry and hungry and hungry and because you're hungry for a 
the freedom that the Bible gives, the only freedom that God gives is the only one that can satisfy our hunger and satisfy everything because the world will always leave us feeling hungry and chasing after things that we want and it will never satisfy us. I think this is why celebrities sometimes say that they regret getting famous because I guess when they first started getting famous, they thought it was a good thing. Like, I can't wait to be famous! And not gonna lie, when I was younger, I used to want to be famous. But now when I think about it, like, now they say, you know, some celebrities say, like, I regret becoming famous, you know? And I think that's why, because when you're in that kind of world and you just keep on chasing after things, like chasing and chasing and chasing, it never gets enough. These people have so much money. These people have five different houses. These people have planes, have jets, have their own jacuzzi and hot tub and whatever, but they still get depressed. There are still celebrities that commit suicide. There are still celebrities who, I guess, in a, in a worse mental state than us normal people, you know? Because it's just not enough. It's just never gets enough. You think it, you think you're gonna be happy when people recognize you, but then these people, these famous people also have their problems. They have their problems with paparazzi and, and crazy fans, you know, stalking them. And I think that's why, you know, it's just, it's just not enough. You just don't feel satisfied. That's the thing, yes, the Bible is a law. The whole Bible is a law. It says it here, the perfect law. It is a, a law. The thing is, God's word is not a strict law. It, it is a strict law. But it's not a strict law that forces us to be slaves to it. That's the difference, okay? It's a law that sets us free from sin. How many laws in the world can you feel sets you free? No. I mean, maybe yes. I don't know nothing about laws. It gives you a new life. How many laws give you a new life? None. And it's not just some rules to follow, it's not just some silly rules. It is actually a holy way of life. We are supposed to be holy. Remember, this Bible is called the Holy Bible for a reason. It was written by the Holy God. I know there are people who say the Bible was written by humans. No, it wasn't. Okay. You can get into that another video if you want. <laughs> the Bible was written by God, okay? The Holy God. Not anything can be called holy, okay? That's why I get so annoyed when people say, Holy cow! No, a cow is not holy. Okay, I have a cow right here. Hello. He's so cute. Uh, yeah. Basically, <laughs> this Bible right here. What is the meaning of Bible, by the way? Oh, I never I never actually thought of that. Let's Google the word Bible. Bible. I, I, I might be dumb, but it's fine. Bible. <laughs> oh. Oh, so it is. Oh, so it is the Christian one. Oh, it's, it's just, it's derived from the coin Greek, whatever that is, meaning the books. And it has a literal meaning of paper or scroll and came to be used as an ordinary word for book. So if that is correct, I mean, it could be wrong, but if that is correct, then any book can be called a Bible, <laughs> you know? But this one is called the Holy Bible for a reason. The Holy God gave this to us, this whole thing to us to tell us how to live our lives and how to live a holy life in Him. Everything is in there, guys. Everything. What to do in your life, what to not do in your life. It is all in there. <laughs> we are just so lazy not to read it, you know. Trust me, I used to be so lazy. Now, once I read it, I'm like, whoa, I've been doing so many wrong things in my life, you know. That's why we need to read the Bible because everything is in there. So, this is the last verse that I'm going to get to today. And this is verse 26. If anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deserves him He de <laughs> he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. I was gonna cut it out, I was gonna read it again, but then now you guys know how bad I am reading. You know, just put it in. What I get from this is keep a tight rein on his tongue. This is just gonna be short, but basically what I get from this is what we say is kind of a reflection of what we believe in and what and what is in us, you know? So if we say bad words, who do we serve, you know? If we say bad words, what do we listen to? What do we watch, you know? That is, uh, I think it's in the Bible, right? It is not what goes into a man that defiles him, but what is come out, what comes out, something like that. It is true. What you say is kind of a reflection of what you do, uh, I mean, what you believe in and who you serve. So that's why we must only say holy and wholesome things. And we should stay away from things that we should not say, things that God wouldn't want us to say, because Jesus wouldn't say those kinds of things. Jesus wouldn't say dirty words. Bad words. That's why we need to stay away from it. If we say we want to live like Jesus, 
we we gotta do what Jesus does and we gotta not do what Jesus doesn't do, right? Because I feel like people only focus on look, we should do what Jesus does. But I feel like no one ever mentions that we shouldn't do what Jesus didn't do. You know, Jesus doesn't say bad words. Jesus doesn't say the F word, you know? That is very dirty words and things that we should not say, right? Because Jesus didn't, wouldn't say it. Because what we say is a reflection of what we learn and what we listen to. So like, imagine if a Christian always says negative things or has a very negative outlook on life and always never has a good attitude and never says positive things and always says hopeless things, right? And bad things. What does that say about the Bible that you read? What does that say about the God that you serve? People are going to ask that. Most probably, right? Because you say you're Christian, so... Like, oh, that means your God is like that. You know, like, we're supposed to be the light of the world, right? Because the castle on a hill cannot be hidden. So that's why we must only do things that God wants us to do and do things that Jesus would do, you know? Because we're supposed to show Jesus in us. We're supposed to live like Jesus, you know? Think, what would Jesus do? That's what people say, right? Do think about that every day. What would Jesus do? Because the thing is, people will have a perception of God based on us. You know, because we are Christ's representative on earth, you know, we have the Holy Spirit in us. Once we have accepted Jesus into our lives, we have the Holy Spirit living in us. So we're supposed to represent that, you know, we're supposed to let the Holy Spirit act through what we do. We're supposed to have the Holy Spirit guide us and, and say stuff through us and not have, not say things based on what, on what we think. The Holy Spirit is supposed to do things through us, you know. We're supposed to be this vessel for God. So basically, we're supposed to represent God in the best way possible. So that's why we need to keep a tight rein on our tongue, which is very hard. But, you know, it is possible. You know, when I say I quit cussing, I used to curse so much. And I used to gossip. Okay? Like, <laughs> you know, it is possible if you really ask God to take control of your life. It is hard to do it alone. You can't do it alone, guys. You can't do it alone. You need God in your life, man. You need to try. You need to try. You know, it's very hard. I'm not saying I'm better than you at this. I'm just saying that I know it used to be impossible. I used to think it was impossible to stop cursing and to stop saying bad things, right? And stop saying negative things. <sighs> but it is possible. So yeah, that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed what I learned from James chapter 1. I hope it blessed you in any way. And if there's anything else that you guys learned or any like kind of interpretation that you guys have, you can put it in the comment section down below. I would love to read it. And yeah, God bless you today your week, your month, your year, your life. God bless you and your families and don't forget Jesus loves you.